As I said earlier, there are a few routing protocols to choose from. They fall into two groups, interior gateway protocols or IGPs and exterior gateway protocols or EGPs. It's very simple. IGPs fit within your organization. As you can see, there's quite a few IGP options available. An EGP provides dynamic routing between two different organizations. Routing protocols often call different organizations autonomous systems. The only EGP available today is BGP. The simplest example of using BGP is between your company and your internet provider. You are both different autonomous systems as you're both managed by different people. This is common if you have a backup internet connection. If your primary connection fails, BGP routes traffic across the backup connection. BGP is a special routing protocol which may be an IGP or an EGP. It does get complicated and it isn't covered in the CCNA exam, so we won't really talk a lot about it. For IGPs, we have five options available, but they're far from equal. The oldest is RIP, or Routing Information Protocol. Unfortunately, it has critical limitations and it's really not very good. It uses hop count as metric. Remember that the metric is how a routing protocol measures how long a path is. Hop count is a very simple metric. Imagine a destination that's four routers away, then RIP will measure this as four. Unfortunately, this is not a good way to measure a path length. It doesn't measure how good those links are. One path might have a metric of two, but have very slow links. Another might have a metric of four, but have fast links. RIP will think the slow path is actually better. So the lesson here is avoid RIP. It's not worth the hassle. One of the better options is EIGRP. Cisco designed EIGRP, so it was for Cisco routers only. They then allowed other vendors to use it, but few have taken them up on the offer. So we still generally consider it to be Cisco only. It has a very detailed metric for measuring network paths. It looks at things like bandwidth, delay, link reliability, and link load. It then puts these values into an algorithm, which creates the metric. It's also very easy to work with. At least I think it is. Many people prefer our next option, which is OSPF. OSPF has been around for a very long time. It wasn't designed by a specific company, and this means it's available to be used by all vendors. This makes it a popular choice in a network that uses equipment from various different vendors. It's quite possibly the most popular IGP for that very reason. OSPF's metric is good, but it's much simpler than EIGRP. It defines each link as having a cost. This cost comes from the bandwidth of the link. The lower the cost, the better the link. And OSPF organizes the network into areas. This makes it easier to organize and plan out the topology. We'll look at OSPF in more detail in the following videos. As I said before, we can use BGP in two ways, internally as an IGP and externally as an EGP. That's why we use the terms IBGP and EBGP. You can do some amazing things with BGP, as it's extremely tunable. On the other hand, this often leads to a lot of manual configuration. Usually, you would only use IBGP if there's a particular reason to do so in your network. If you don't have a particular reason, you would normally just stick with OSPF or EIGRP. BGP is difficult to learn to start with. Many network engineers never end up completely mastering it. ISIS is a very robust protocol. It's not common at all in small and medium networks. In fact, it's generally only used in very large networks like service providers. This is because it creates a logical backbone that can grow as it's needed to. While it works well, it's definitely not as popular as other routing protocols. Also, it works a bit differently to the others, which can make it harder to learn and use. Now, here's the interesting thing. We don't need to select only one protocol and stick with it. A router can run more than one routing protocol at a time. If we run the command show IP protocols, we get a list of all the routing protocols on this router. Here we can see the router is running EIGRP, OSPF, and BGP. 
There's a lot of information in this command. Don't worry too much about the details yet. If we now take a look at the routing table, we can see that this router has learned a few routes. If you look on the column on the far left, you can see a letter next to each of these routes. This is the code that tells us which routing protocol learned the route. The code section at the top helps us to decipher this. For example, the S is a static route. The O is for OSPF. EIGIP is slightly different, it has a D. And B for BGP, whether it's IBGP or EBGP. We've looked at a broad range of routing protocols now. Keep in mind though, that the CCNA exam will only really look at OSPF in detail. When you're ready to go to the next level of certification, that's CCNP, then you'll need to know EIGRP and BGP as well.